Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's an incredible time of the year to be present. And uh, my name is Lisa Bubari. By trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and uh, have created this beautiful site uh, that I come to you every Tuesday at noon, and we talk about different things. Uh, we share about healing, uh, different modalities, and uh, how we can tap within ourselves to heal. Hello, Sharon. How are you? Uh, just to let you know, you can always reach me at my website, info at healwithin.com. I'm also on Instagram under Heal Within Hypnotherapy and on Twitter on uh, Hypnotherapy and uh, Lisa Bubari. Um, so hello, Mary Jean. Today's session is going to be about um, one of the biggest habits that uh, most people come and have heard that is very helpful to stop uh, a habit. It's stop smoking. And uh, for years, I've worked with so many thousands of people, either in groups or on one-on-one, -on -one, that have come to me to stop smoking, and I'm calling it stop smoking, and I'm going to go more into how we break it in the next uh, half an hour. I'll share most of um, the emotional connection to cigarettes or any most of the habits that we have. And uh, have you heard of the emotion code? Yes, I have, Mary. Mary Jean. Yes, I have about the emotion code. Uh, today's uh, session is mostly what hypnosis and hypnotherapy, how hypnotherapy can help for us to stop smoking and why do we develop habits. So I'm going to do a small little presentation about our conscious and our subconscious mind, how we hold on to habits, and then talk about my CD for stop smoking. And I'm going to gift someone, whoever wants to stop smoking, I'll be more than happy to gift you one of my CDs. And also Stump on Smoking, which is the book I wrote. Now, why am I bringing all this up? Because in just three days... It's the Great American Smokeout. And if you know, it started many years ago. It used to be called the National Smokeout Day. And then they also had the American, the Great American Smokeout, where on November 17th, which is in three days, uh, they it's a known thing that all the smokers, especially for companies and organizations, they take that one day off and do not smoke. It starts in the morning all the way through. And so it's a one day of 24 hours of no smoking. And I've had so many of my clients who have come to me and said, I can stop anytime I want, but uh, for a duration life like going to the movie theaters or a one day because of this, or if I am challenged for a day or two days, and then I go back on. And there are so many who smoke for the longest time and uh, quit smoking for about a week, even a month, and even a year or so, and then something triggers, and then they go back to smoking. So what I do is I treat the person as a whole. And why am I saying as a whole? Because everything that I do stems from first and foremost, let's see why you want to stop smoking or any of the habits. But today, it's about smoking. Why do you want to stop smoking now? Why 
um, now versus a week ago or a month ago. And then when you are ready, what I do is work with the self-esteem. That means I can, I am ready, I am willing, and that's when we start. That's what I really need, the person wanting it, wanting to become healthier. So first, let me explain. This is our mind, and uh, our mind is in two parts, our conscious level and our subconscious level. Consciously, which is a very small portion of our mind, is like a video camera. It looks, it listens, and it learns, right? That's what a video camera does. It looks, it listens, and it learns. That means it captures. So everything we do is exactly that. The subconscious also does, has a three, three, um, what do we call it? I'm sorry. <laughs> the subconscious mind has a three functions. That's the word, function. The function of the subconscious mind is everything we looked, listened, and learned, it stores it in there. So it becomes this storage. Second thing it does, just like a video camera, it recalls what you do a um, reverse and then it also goes forward what we can create in life and then it can also pause when we pause at certain aspects of our life in order for us to evaluate and recognize what i do with my tagline which is evoke rewind embrace which is pause to embrace the reality where we are and then we evolve which is moving forward in life just like a video camera right you get the concept now when we start a habit like the smoking like i started when i was 12 years old is because a cousin of mine gave me a cigarette and had me grab cigarettes from my mom okay the another word for that is take it from my mom and I would bring it for him and he would pack it, open it, give me one cigarette and one for him. Actually, it was the reverse, one for him and one for me. So in effect, it became a reward system for me because I wanted to be with him. I looked up to him and when he would give me the cigarette, it was like for bringing the cigarette, a pack of cigarette for him, that was my reward. Most people who start smoking is because of either peer pressure or they're looking up to someone or they just want to fit in. So most of the smokers start at a very younger age during high school, if not middle school. Now, the smoking, after a while, just like any habit, when we do something over and over, over and over consecutively more than 33 days and we continue that it becomes a part of our habit the habit becomes behavior and after so many years of doing the same thing just like some of my clients when i say how long you've been smoking they say oh my god as long as i can remember but as long as we can remember start it at a time and when we look back, we can go into the subconscious mind, into a timeline, and we re reverse back to that time that they started. Now, once I get a client to that level, while they're in hypnosis, which is a very relaxed state, relaxing the mind, relaxing the body, and then taking the conscious level, relaxing the conscious level so we can bypass the analyzing, judging, criticizing, 
critical factor in between our conscious and our subconscious and delve into the subconscious mind just like a computer chip when we store all the files in there we open that file for the smoking not the rest of the habits or behaviors and we delve in there as if opening that file for the smoking and we read we find when they started smoking when it was the first time you had that cigarette how did that cigarette make you feel did you gag on it did you say yuck or it was like ooh, they're looking at me I have to keep smoking or it gave you a sense of belonging it felt good you see in my book on page 25 one of the things that I write is your conscious and subconscious mind and the conscious mind says when we are ready to stop smoking we are not it's it's bad for me it stinks it smells it costs a lot it's expensive it's not acceptable anymore whereas in the 1960s and 50s I did a post where in 1939 there was this woman who was going around and doing classes of the etiquette of how to smoke properly like ladylike for all the women in the group today the etiquette has changed it's about being a non-smoker it's being healthy so it's out of line with who I am and who your group is or your kids learn that smoking is not good and then they come and say daddy and mommy please don't smoke because I've heard it's gonna kill you now that's the conscious mind that's what we consciously in a logic way want to stop smoking but the subconscious mind which is the emotional factor that connects emotionally inside has this saying it says but the cigarette helps me survive it helps me with my bowel movement I can't stop I'll gain weight if I stop. It helps me relax. Now, how many of you know that when some people want to relax, they light a cigarette and kick back and relax, or have a glass of wine or a scotch for gentlemen, and they say, this relaxes me. But alcohol and cigarettes, tobacco and alcohol, are stimulants they're not relaxants but it's the emotional connection what we connect to that cigarette or to that food or to that alcohol that we have it registered cigarette relax cigarette bowel movement especially if it's early in the morning cigarette if I stop I'm gonna gain weight so in order for me to diet and not gain weight Oh, I will smoke a pack a day because that kills my appetite. So if I have no appetite, I'm not gaining weight. So I rather smoke instead of be fat. Now, all that, it's incredible. It happens in your mind, consciously, subconsciously. There is this dialogue. It's as if the devil and the angel. Mm. Most behaviors and we do not change as human beings we're not going to change anything or modify a behavior until two things and i've talked about this many times are in place either the pain is great or greater or the reward is so much greater than the pain we are going through with that if you get sick or just like one of my clients who got the cancer throat cancer and came to me on the second session she was a non-smoker 
we didn't even need the third session. She came in for the third session and got a massage. Or the reward of wanting to get married or as one of my other clients, he was having a baby. Well, he was not having a baby, but they were going to have a baby. His wife was having a baby. And they decided, we want to create a healthy environment. And he said, for the love of my child and the health of my family, no more smoking. Third session, he was done smoking. So you see, the reward was the child. And so many times it's been when a grandchild or a child looks up at mommy or daddy and says, please stop smoking. And the love of the child is the biggest reward for someone to stop something like that. Now, I also want to talk about something else. Words have an incredible impact on who we are and what we do. When we talk about quit smoking, this is when I teach and I do my groups. I also educate not only on the mind, how the mind works, I educate on the entire um, function of what stimulates, what impacts, what empowers us, but also the word quit. We don't want to be a quitter, right? So no matter how many times in your life you've tried to quit smoking, I want you to know if you change the word by I am now ready to stop smoking, I am now ready to become a non-smoker. That means today, this very day, you choose to become healthier and stop smoking. It's like you can't sit in a car and start driving, and when you get to a stop sign, you quit the accelerator hoping that the car stops at a stop sign, do you? No. You have to stop, and you put your foot on the brake, and you stop the car at a stop sign or at a traffic light. It's all word association. The same thing as it's an emotional association. If I stop smoking, what do I gain? I gain health. I gain less asthma. I gain uh, no sinus no headache, uh, I gain a healthier environment, I smell better, I look clean, my hands and fingers, I don't have to wash it 10 times, I'm not a nuisance. As a matter of fact, so many people who stop smoking, it's because smoking becomes a nuisance, especially in wintertime, that you have to go outside, open the door, put a jacket on just to light that cigarette, right? Especially if you're in a company, an organization, and if you're an employer, you know how many times your employees take a break in order to go all the way downstairs, and then they come up. And here's the thing. Not only they come up because they took that break, and the other ones who didn't take the break of 15 minutes for smoking, they were working away, right? And at the same time, this person who comes up has to spray, has to chew a gum, has to go and mouth and wash their mouth and rinse their mouth. That's another five minutes. So there's 20 minute gap to 30 minute gap. Every time someone is doing the smoking and then has to do all the clearing and cleaning. Ah. Now the emotional connections to cigarette. Here's why so many are connected. Because cigarettes, in a way, are a buddy system. Not only a relaxant, consciously that you have programmed yourself, this equals this. But cigarettes become a buddy system in sickness and in health, in sadness and in joy. Um, helps me diet, 
helps me keep my figure. And there is a lot of people who are overweight and smoke. And then they wonder why they're, they've got heart palpitation and everything else. So with all that emotional, underlying emotional connection to that cigarette, what we do, what I do as a hypnotherapist is we go in, pull up that file, and every connection that you have with a cigarette, we reverse it, we edit it, we erase it, and we save that in the archive, into the storage of your subconscious mind and creating a healthier, vibrant person that you want to be as a non-smoker. We create that file to be the main file that is in here and that you see yourself every single day repeating day in day out i am a healthy vibrant non-smoker every day in every way i feel better than yesterday today is better than yesterday tomorrow will be better than today mm. Every day I walk around, I smell good, I feel good, I can walk, I can run, I can be with my children and not think I am stinking, right? So that's what we do. And the essence of all that is for you to connect within yourself and find yourself and be the best buddy system to you. I see so many people that go to the gym, they come outside of the gym, and the first thing they do is light a cigarette. Really? You just worked out two hours. So as all the nerve endings are open, your heart is pumping oxygenated blood, your lungs have expanded, and you feel good, you've sweated, all that toxins come out, and then you put more toxins back in. Look at the dichotomy. But the ones who smoke, they think, ah, oh, I just did an incredible workout, might as well. In the old days, that's what we used to do. I remember. I used to dance for three hours while I'm dancing. I would smoke, I would drink, and dance again. Every club we went, in the movie theaters, even in the cars, uh, planes, restaurants, everywhere. They say we want to be a non-smoker, but nowadays they're smoking everywhere, even in front of restaurants. That 20 feet does not mean anymore. So, smoking in itself is something that you choose to stop. And the day that you are ready to become a non-smoker, call me. I guarantee you I know everything about smoking. I know every emotional connection that there is with smoking. A few weeks ago, or actually months ago, I talked about this one client of mine that had never smoked until he lost his mom. And he picked up a cigarette. And since then, he started smoking. And he was in his 30s when he started smoking. And it was 10 years that he stopped. And he came in, and it was 10 years that he was smoking. And didn't remember why he smoked or why he started that habit. You know? When we lose someone or it's such a traumatic thing, that in itself is something that draws us to pick up something that creates a buddy system. Again, it was a buddy system, but the buddy it was not a buddy, just anybody. He picked up a habit that it was his mom's. And by having that cigarette that he used to smoke, it was as if he had still a connection going. And mom was next to him until he realized it. And then he was like, oh, my God. I can't stand it, but I've been smoking. And just the realization of that and the connection and having a dialogue
that in itself was the best gift he gave himself. Is by connecting, having a dialogue with the spirit of his mom or just remembering him, remembering her and saying, I will remember you. And from this day forward, I will have you in my heart and I no longer need to smoke in order to have you close to me. You see, most of our habits that we have picked up, A lot of people say it's addiction. But addiction also has that hole that we somewhere, somehow, when we started, we lacked something. And I believe the lack is love. Lack of love. Lack of attention. Lack of worth. Lack of value. And that is the reason I start with self-esteem. Once you value yourself, your body, your heart, and who you are, you can let go of habits that are no longer worthy of you. And that's the difference. We all have a crutch, a habit. So I changed my habit. And I've talked about this before, that I used to smoke and p shoot pool. And for the longest time, I thought, I can't win unless I have that cigarette and uh, my beer next to me. Until months after stopping, I went and shot pool and I won. And it was like, wow, I can still shoot pool. I can still win the game. And I didn't have to have a cigarette and a beer next to me. You see, I know everything about it. So do you have an emotional connection with a habit that is no longer empowering you or enhancing your life? If so, I'm open. Ask me any question. I would like to respond to if you have any questions. And uh, now that it's nearing my half an hour, again, this book, Stomp on Smoking, and my hypnotic CDs, even if you're not willing to do the hypnotherapy session and you want to try hypnosis on your own, by all means, you can go to www.hewwithin.com. On my website, you will see shop. Go there. You will find the book. You can download the book. It's a PDF if you don't want to purchase it. And you can find this book on Amazon.com as well. It's called Stomp on Smoking by Lisa Bubari. And my CDs, you can even download the hypnotic suggestions and listen to it in the comfort of your home. And here's the caveat. In order to make any change in life, especially change of habit, I say, do listen to the CD or do whatever you want, reverse it and change, modify your habit. 33 consecutive days, you have to do something different than what you have been doing. If you want to stop smoking, you don't have to go cold turkey, although my CDs will help you become a non-smoker much faster because it works directly streamlining into the subconscious mind every night before you go to sleep. If you listen to that and that stays into your subconscious mind, it empowers every aspect of it. And as you awaken in the morning, if you have time to listen to it again, for 33 days, you will see automatically you will stop smoking or you will reduce it by 50%, 60% on automatically. And with one session with me or two sessions, you will be completely, by choice, a non-smoker. Again, I am here for you. Any questions? I'm, by all means, 
ready to answer. Let me see. Hi, Varush. How are you? Uh, Sanaz, hello, Susan. I know you're not ready to stop smoking right now, but if you are, by all means, you can go and download and listen. Not only the hypnotic CDs are incredible for the hypnosis, but it's also a relaxation. It's two for one. Uh, John, hello. Hi, Phil. How are you, dear? Long time no see. How are your hikes? Uh, thank you for all of you and for being here. And it is my pleasure to be with you every single week, Tuesdays at noon. This is Lisa Bubari. So for the person who wants it, the first person who says they want the CD, uh, PM me and um, I will get, I will mail you the hypnotic CD just as long. You may have to promise not to listen to it in the car or operating a vehicle because you're gonna go into hypnosis. It's the best relaxation CD you can have and help you stop smoking. In three days, which is November 17, it's the Great American Smoke Out. And um, I will come on on Friday and do a full 15, 20 minute uh, hypnosis, hypnotic uh, session for anyone who is a smoker or any friend of yours. Please let them know that I'm going to do a 20 minute hypnosis session, guided visualization, and they can record it and play it, or you can go download my CD, purchase it, and I thank you for this time. Hello, Andy. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Lisa Bubari, and it's time to heal within, to become healthier and stronger. Let us evolve by evoking what was, embracing what is, and evolving to what will be. Because you matter. Your health matters. And until the 17th, I bid you goodbye. Thank you so much for being present with me.